Hello traders, uh, Nick Shaheen looking at Bitcoin. So I'm not a Bitcoin expert, but I'm pretty darn good at charts. And a chart is a chart is a chart, and I'm going to prove it to you. First of all, I did call Bitcoin's breakout from under 10,000. You can go back and look at my videos. I said 16 to 18 was the target. Had no clue it was going to go all the way up to here, but I knew the breakout was coming. So I was challenging the people that were saying it was doomed, it would never go above. And I'm not a Bitcoin bug. Um, I'm just telling you what's up <laughs> with the chart so last month I did a video on it and I drew some lines um, let's see where those I, I know I remember I drew a resistance line and some sort of a support line so I'm gonna show them and I did not update them so um, this was an older resistance zone they broke out from it right here and look how they used it as support once they broke out so every resistance line becomes the opportunity so if the bulls trip they f the fight and then they bust it out and then they test it for footing and then they go they repeated the process up here and then they fell back so uh these were the more recent two lines i drew one was uh, resistance where they failed a couple of times two three times four times these are daily candles and some support they slashed through the support they went to where i thought they would find footing they found footing earlier and then they went back now they're stuck between two zones so this last candle is exactly between those two zones in fact it's having a tizzy after hours this might have a delay on it let me see is there a little d here yeah i have a like a 15 minute delay so chances are yep yeah, no but i did capture it so 54,000 tizzy after hours today oh, what is today uh, the 10th may 10th may 10th yeah so um monday let's see here so the range is i don't care what this is I, I can trade the chart just based on that. So here's my thought on trading Bitcoin. First of all, let's talk fundamentals. So far, um, I'm just going to give you uh, my opinion, okay? And then we'll go from there. So people complain about the fact that it's clandestine, that it's um, it's used for crime. I can tell you one thing. We use cash for crime <laughs> forever, for hundreds of years, for as long as we've had commodities, like silver before that maybe they used for ca for crime, now uh, it's cash. So Bitcoin is traceable to a degree way more than just cash. You hand somebody a hundred bucks, unless somebody films you handing it a hundred bucks that doesn't have any digital pr print, whereas the Bitcoin does at certain point. Um, so that argument is bunk. The reason, oh, you can't have Bitcoin because it's used for nefarious. You can hand somebody a piece of gold and say, go do this crime. Um, how is this different? I, I don't get it. So speaking of gold, how is gold different than Bitcoin? So I have this argument with my family and their eyes glaze over because they don't like to hear it either. Th there's no use for gold other than the fact that humans love it, period. End of story. We can live without gold forever. It has a few applications and I don't think it's necessary. Uh, so the fact that it has this much value and we covet it is just that. People want it and it's hard to get. So it's rare and people want it. Therefore, it has value. Um, Bitcoin, no different. It doesn't matter what it is. It could be toilet paper. It's rare and it is fact, in fact, is more rare than gold because it's finite, right? We have a certain number of them and a whole bunch of people want it. So it will have value. It doesn't matter whether I like it or not, whether you like it or not, whether it's crap or not it, it could be chia pets i don't know they sold rocks for a while they sell stars so it, it doesn't matter what it what it is people want it and it's rare so it will have value so the argument is it's not a currency and it doesn't need to be it's a repository of wealth so you don't use gold for currency, but it's allowed to exist. Nobody says it's it shouldn't be a currency. Who's arguing that Bitcoin should be a currency? So if you have a crypto account or any repository account, you can uh, use your value that you have in crypto by translating it into fiat cash and just using it at the point of sales and paying whatever denomination of whatever currency that you have in front of you. So if I'm paying for something that costs $100, I can immediately transfer whatever wealth of Bitcoin I have into cash that little amount and then pay for it so it's not like i'm pricing something with bitcoin oh it's uh it's it's this much bitcoin no wait it's that much bitcoin now no wait it's this much no it's repository of wealth so if i have money and i want to store them in bitcoin terms it should be my my prerogative so 
we should be a little flexible at the concept of Bitcoin. It's it's nothing new. It's just the concept is old. This is a new form of it, and that's it. In fact, I bet you future is going to look more like this than cash because the governments are I almost cussed, are messing up so badly with, with their federal reserves and with their central bank's action that they're just destroying cash, and that's why people hide in Bitcoin. Um, this insanity of talking trillions now, everybody's talking trillions. I mean, it's a shmut ton of money. <laughs> anyway, so back to the Bitcoin chart. This is it on a daily. So if I'm active trading Bitcoin, here's my point. If I'm active trading Bitcoin, I should be good with charts. If I'm not... I'm just playing with fire. That's it. Your opponent is better than you. You can you can rest assured that the machines are better than you trading. So if you don't know what they think like, you should just buy Bitcoin and hold it or short Bitcoin and walk away from it. Whichever you want to do. Do it long term or be good with charts or get help in charts. And what I mean by that is like people that chase it going into a prior failure, they start shorting it or they get out. That's a mistake. If it's falling into here, that is not a place you leave it because that's the base from which they came. So if I didn't get out anywhere here, I don't get out here. If it on the way back up here, and if somebody was thinking about it, thinking about it, and then it comes back to here and they get long, that's the place not to get long. Why? Because it just failed and it just filled the gap before. So there are some technical hints that are always going to happen, self-fulfilling prophecies. Not that I'm a genius. It's just that I know what I try to expect what machines are going to do. So going into a prior fail point, uh, onus is on the bulls to close above, hold it, test it for footing, and ramp. If that doesn't happen, I don't chase it, even if it has to go without me. So it's okay for me to miss on upside than to have to grab somebody else's profits and ride them all the way down. And guess what? I almost can guarantee you the person that got long here and got stuck bailed here which would be the exact thing not to do because that's the base from which they came. So what is this? This is a two hour candle. So every candle here is two hours. So four of these is just about a day. So if somebody bought into the open um, or into the, you know, overnight, they gave up on it at the end of the day. It, they need help with the charts. Not that they're stupid. It's just that they need help. And if I don't if I don't know charts, I should just admit it. And look at this. Look at my line. Look at this. Look at this. And look at where we're at. These are not coincidences. This line I drew a while back. So I can just extend that line over to here. And I would I could have done it today. Same with this one. I did it here. I expected that um there would be sellers there. And if I look back, it has history. So there are no coincidences. Uh, the machines are pretty methodical because they don't do guesswork. They don't feel, oh, they don't say it feels like a turn. What do you think? Is this a bottom? They don't do that. They look left. Was this a bottom? Yes. Therefore, we should repeat the process until the process fails. And when it does, we flip the, the, uh, the buy the dip to sell the rip. Then becomes every pop into uh, some sort of moving average will be sold. It's as simple as that, period. So this is a two-hour candle. So if this is not enough information for me, I can get down more gritty. So this is one-hour candle. I can get down to a half-hour candle. I'm trying to find more clues for us. Okay, 15-minute candles. I have more clues. So going back up to 55.6 and 56, and I can't believe I'm saying these numbers. <laughs> but 55 and 56, if I look left, you know that that should have held they slice through them. So when they come back, they're going to be sticky a little bit. Plus, you can see a little bit, um, some sort of a, like an, like this candle right there, this doji here, uh, 15 minutes. So for 15 minutes, they were unsure. They rallied this way, they fell this way, and they came back to here. And they stayed indecisive through this candle. And then they said, whoa, let's go. So when they come back to this area, it should be somewhat sticky. So they tried to hold, and then they failed. So... That's normal. So on the way back, I should expect a battle up here. So if I start longs going into this little battle, I'm making a mistake. Onus is on the bulls to take this out and convince us. Moreover, when they get to 57.3, they're gonna the and 57.7, they're gonna find more sellers. So this thing 
goes in wa- waves. It, it, you, you can't not know the levels because they're so wide and if you're actively trading. So if you're trading the futures, it's no different than trading the ES futures, the minis or the micros and, and the S&P. But you have to know that going into this area, there's going to be sellers. Going into this area, there's definitely going to be sellers. Onus is on the bulls to take out 58.8 and use it as uh, a pedestal to go up higher. Every ledge they tried to hold on the way down is going to be a problem on the way up. Now let's talk volume profile. Here's that orange line. What is that thing? It's basically, uh, it shows me the volume bars only on the left side to tell me at what level they happen. So this orange line draws itself automatically. This is the volume bars. Uh, that tells me that the busiest area is in here. So on the way back up, going into a busy area, it's like hitting a traffic jam. They're going to stall. If they're going up, they're going to stall. If they're coming down, it's support. So expect sellers. Plus, if you like Fibonacci, here to here, eyeball the halfway. Where is the halfway? I'm going to say somewhere in this cluster, maybe at the low end of it. What do you think? Okay, so it's right here. The 61.8 is right here. I'm no Fibonacci, Fibonacci expert, but I've heard it said that the 61.8 is the strongest one. To me, it doesn't matter. If you fall this much, eyeball halfway. If you go back there, it's normal price action. It's nothing changing. So if they fall to here and they bounce hard, they come back halfway, that doesn't mean it's off to the races. It just means they just recovered halfway, and I do not start longs going into this box. That's my opinion going from here. So find yourself a good bottom to buy if you want to get into it. I wouldn't get long all the way, all in at whatever level. Conviction has to be low. Look at how fast this thing moves. So you add over time when the price differential is huge or when the time passes, either or. All right, hopefully that helps people out. I am not a Bitcoin guy. Like I'm not the guy that says, oh, Bitcoin all the way, all the way from 20. So this is not a biased opinion. I don't have anybody. Well, I do know people who trade it, but I don't know who's long or short. So I'm not trying to help anybody with these comments. That's the disclosure. I did fund my account at crypto. I swear to you, I decided to go long Ethereum a couple months ago, I think. It was like 1200 I popped it in the chat room. Time to get long. I opened the account. I never funded it. I finally funded it, and now it's like 4100 So there you go. Nick didn't listen to himself. Later, bye.